in this next phase of work, what we're going to be doing is actually very simple compared to what we have been what we have been doing. <clears throat> we built this model in which we have these two state charts and in a fairly straightforward way we kept track of costs for weight related information, diabetes related information on the one hand and we, we could simply, because those were partitioned separately for diabetes and for weight related factors, we could very simply update those in the corresponding state charts. So you may remember the weight related factors were purely the, for costs were purely updated in the weight state chart and the diabetes related costs were purely updated in the diabetes state charts. And to get the total costs borne on a yearly basis, we did what? Anyone remember? What did this function do? Total annual annualized costs. What did that do in the final moments of the session? Added the two. They added the two together. So the idea was you had a certain amount of dollars from diabetes, a certain amount of dollars from from um, from weight, and and that afforded a very crisp, nice sort of decomposition. We thought about doing that for quality of life, keeping track separately of the loss of quality of life from weight on the one hand, and the loss of quality of life on the other from diabetes. But we, we chose instead to grab the bull by horns. And remember, I may remark that the horns might be a bit sharp. Do you remember that? Yeah. Were they sharp? I was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sharp they were. Um, so we ended up, you know, with a strategy that that had some virtue recommended on a relative basis, and one of them was it allowed us to specify the quality of life numbers all in one place. But there, there was an unfortunate level of mechanism needed to realize this uh, in terms of uh, variables, keeping track of our current weight state, our current diabetes state up here. And in terms of the um, the, the need to, to to look up look up um, in this table using values uh, for that current weight state and the current diabetes state right here, and that was because we were entangling these. We were we were not separating them out, but instead we were considering them together. And there's some benefits to that. There's sometimes those quality of life is more tangled, and this gave us the very general case. So uh, it's about as bad as it, as it gets. Um, but all this was at an individual level. We haven't yet dealt with the issue of episodic costs. We'll come back to that in just a bit. But what this model did give us was, was a way of capturing, the, um, uh, capturing these things at an individual level. So having done that, we will now go up to the level of the whole population and compute population-wide quantities that are of often interest in the health economics area. And comparatively speaking, this will be simple. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's go up to the model as a whole, and we are going to build here our first hybrid model. Yes, question? Um, could you just upload the current the Sure, the sure, sure, I'll be glad to do that. Um, so let me um, let me remind myself as to where this guy lives. Um, sir, this lives right uh, in the Sax Institute boot camp. Okay. If you throw it onto your flash drive, I can take it and disseminate it. Sure, but I I will uh, upload it uh, here as well, um, or I'd like to. Yeah. Okay. Or is it having? Work this function. Uh, let's try this again. Um, no, it looks okay. Okay, fine. Um, sax examples, um, and I'll I'll upload this one. So I'll remove the old one. There we go, and I'll upload the new one.
Okay, and this is in classes, external, sax, models, this one, boom. Okay, go. Okay. Okay, so it's on the uh, Google Drive site for those who wish to, to find it there. And I'll go copy thumb drive. There we go. Great. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, overwrite. Boom. Okay. There we go. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so are there any questions about the model thus far before we go on with it? Any questions? Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to main. We're going to go down main and we're going to add some constructs to main which some of which will be familiar to you some of which uh, less familiar okay so um, first thing is I'd like you to go over to the palette and select the system dynamics palette and we are going to add in to this model some system dynamic stock and flow diagrams. To do this, I'm going to suggest going and zooming out here and dragging up these these um, graphs up a little bit so that we can um, we can have some room to put our our totals above there, our stock and flow. So all I did is I grabbed these things and I moved them up with my keys. Okay, so select and move. Then I'm going to zoom back down like that. Hey, I wanted, oh man, I zoomed in way too much. Boom. Okay. Um, there we go. Great. Oh, oh, the one thing I didn't, I shouldn't have moved. Oh gosh. This guy here. What does this guy represent? Why is there a guy, why is there a guy standing there? That guy represents the origin of what, from whence, the origin from which the agents will be <coughs> Placed. Okay, so the agents would place to the right and down if they're positive x and y coordinates. If they're negative x coordinates would be placed to the left of that. Okay, so. Does anybody else need? Anyone else need the model? Is it currently yes? Okay, okay, so folks. I'd like to drag in, so well, let's, let's motivate this. So if we have, we have quality of life measures at an individual level, how do we go from, in, from quality of life, well, okay, sorry, let's, let's step back and look for that. Um, suppose we wanted to accumulate at the level of the whole population, I'm recording this properly? Yes. At the level of the whole population, we wanted to record the number of life years lived of this population. We want to accumulate population life years lived over the entire time of the simulation. How would we do that? We we'll have a running total of life years lived to this point in time. So we run it for, say, 100 years, and we want all along that time it's accumulating the number of life years lived to this point. How would we do that? Well, let me ask this. Suppose there were one person in the population and that person lived to a ripe old age of 100. How many life years live, would have been lived? 100. Suppose there were 10 people in the population that were each very old at the start of the model and they lived only the, the 10 years. And that, that, was, that was all. How many life years would be lived? Okay, so we'll consider it for the full 10 years, so 10, 10, 10 life years lived. Um, 
Uh, suppose those 10 people had lived, uh, excuse me, 10 people for 10 years, 100, 100, year, 100 life years lived. So basically, the life years lived is the or summing up, it's the sum over all the years, or in continuous time, it's the integral, integrating it up, the number of, the size of the population over time to get the total number of years lived. Integration being sum as you consider the continuous time at a finer and finer level. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take the population of this model over time, and we're going to be summing it up to get person years lived first. How do we do an integral within the tools afforded to us? We wanted to integrate up a quantity, take an integral of some quantity. What, how can we use these tools? Well, it turns out a stock integrates things. It integrates the value of the flow, the net flow in and out. So all we have to do here is we have to drag in, if we want to have person years lived, let's drag in a stock here and call it person, or better yet, call it life years, life years, L-Y, or you could just say life years, life, life years, okay? Or life years lived if you want, okay? It's going to be life years, and we're going to have a flow into it which is um, new life years, okay? And life years here is gonna start, when we specify a stock here, it's gonna start at, start at zero. In the new life years, the value of the flow that gets integrated, what is that gonna be? Mm. So it's going to reflect the actual size of the entire population at that time. So we're going to integrate up the size of the population. 10 people over 10 years, 100 life years lived. One person over 100 years, 100 life years lived. Okay. So population dot size is going to be the value of new life years lived. That's the number of life years lived across the entire population, okay? So if we have those 10 people and they live 10 years, I'll drag this over here, it's going to be 100, one person 100 years, it's going to be 100 there. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a, um, a happy thing. Now, we probably could have made this a little bit more transparent, um, but I think I'll, I'll leave it as, it as it is right there. And, and let's, let's run this. Can we run it? What do you think? So you'll notice for life years, I made its initial value zero. And then the flow the value of the flow is given population dot size. One of the many virtues that recommend stocks and flows is a declarative character to them. You specify the initial value, you specify how to compute the value of the flow as a formula, and it will do the necessary work. You take care of the what, it takes care of the how. So ladies and gentlemen, can we run this model? Run or not? Run. Okay, so let's run it. Java to yeah, so, well, sort of. I mean, any logic uh, provides this thing called population, and you can do various things with it. You can find people in it. You can ask for the average over things. I think there's, when, when we consider, when we consider uh, population, there's all these different things we can do. We can count the number, we can take a max over things. All these different things. And one of the things that is very very common in Java is we can take the size of it. So we're just asking for its size. How many people are in the population? Does that make sense? Okay, can we run it? Let's run it. 
okay? So here it is, and you'll see it totaling up the number of life years lived. You see that? Up at the top? Okay. Okay, but, but our aspirations are deeper than that. We possess a model of considerable value, an asset that we wish to make, of which we wish to make use. And I'd like to total up not life years lived, but quality adjusted life years lived, or qualities. Hmm. Hmm. How would I do that? How would I do that? Well, what do I need to take into account beyond what I took into account with life years? With life years, everyone who's living now over the course of the year, if, if there's a person who lives over the course of that entire year, what do they count towards life years lived? One. If I want to take into account quality adjusted life years, consider that person, suppose they're in a single health state over the course of that year, what will their contribution be towards the life years lived? Their quality of life, right? So what we need to do here is we need to total up integrate up total quality of life summed up across the entire population. Mmm. Mmm. Summed up. So now I turn to you and ask, how do I sum up the quality of life across the entire population? Riddle me that. Where would I go in any logic? <laughs> Population statistics. So we go to the population here. And we'll go down to the statistics area and we're going to add a new statistic. We'll be, which will be... <coughs> it'll be... Um, um, summed quality of life. Um, maybe it'll be quality of life yeah. summed over population, right? This will be a sum. And what will we sum up? Okay, so how would I say that? What would the expression be? Item dot what? Item dot quality of life. Is it on? Okay. Now, great. So we have this. What do we now have to do? So, what did I do? I did quality of life summed across the entire population. I summed up item dot quality of life. So, what do I have to do now? Sorry? Well, okay, but this is just summed up over the population. I need to integrate it over time, just like I did for life years. I need to total it up over the time, so it's quality adjusted life years lived to this point, just like I was totaling up life years. So how would I do that with a... Stock. Um, you can lip read me despite my accent. Um, okay. Uh, great. Um, so so let's go add a stock and flow. Shall we not? Shall. Okay. So this will be qualies. And this will be a flow into qualities, which will be new 
qualities, fine. What will qualities start at? Zero. Zero. And new qualities, what will be new qualities given by? By what will that be given? Mmm, statistic. Now, I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I could just put it in there. But, but my mind inclines towards transparency. So I'd like to actually drag in a dynamic variable here called qualities summed across population. Oh, sorry, quality of life summed across population. Not qualities. Quality of life summed across the population. There we go. And value will be given by what? By what will its value be given? By what will its value be given? What will be the formula here? Yes, the statistic. So how do we do that? What do I say to give me that statistic? So near yet so far. I want to get the value of that statistic. If I want that value in hand, what do I need to type? Well, what's that? Who, who owns that statistic? Where is it led, where is it defined? In population, so we have to say population dot, and then what? What's the name of the statistic? Quality of life summed up across population. And we have to call it. Do we not? Do. Okay. Oops. What am I doing? Just want to drag that. Okay. Okay. That's great. And then we need to provide a link between this and the new qualities. And the new qualities will will be this. There we go. So we had this dynamic variable that I dragged in. We set its value to be population dot quality of life summed up across population and we made this thing dependent on it. And this added transparency. Down here it's not really clear. You can't say visually what it depends on. This makes it a little bit more clear. So we just use this this variable when we refer to this for the flow. Should we run it? Run or not? Okay. Let's 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 build it. Run. Okay, now let's run it. Okay, Dylan stands poised. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you like some help? 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 Okay. No? Uh, the new qualities will be given by the name of this variable. This dynamic variable. Good. Okay. Who else needs help? Help. Uh, okay, so, so double click on this. Uh, oh, so this should be not a compass. Okay. Okay, other, other help? Who else needs help? Okay. So, so, uh, 
It's interesting that it just kind of brings back. Okay, who else needs help? Okay. Oh, it's oh, in here? Okay, so let's let's go there. Let's go over to here. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, was, which one did it have? Okay, uh, so this is zero. Oh, I see what happened. Yeah. Because here, you have the current weight yeah. states, okay. and then you're okay. adjusting with the quality of life in. So the dude was not expected to current weight states. Yeah, it's connected or not connected to the side. Make sure it works before we get Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm just going to yeah. do that for you here. You know what I'm doing. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, oh, it's not connected on the other side. So, yeah, um, but now it's not connected. Yeah, now you can. Okay, try running it. Yeah. Happy yeah. happy. Okay. 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 Who else needs help? Cool. Look at that. And eventually, it'll just kind of level off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, folks. So, um, you should see something like this, and I would note that. One of the advantages of having the uh, stocks here is that you can click on them and then click on the little graph sign to graph them out. For example, this, here we have it. Okay. Boom. Okay, so here we have qualities computed. Now, la ladies and gentlemen, let's let's go total up costs, shall we not? Shall we not? Shall. Okay. Good. Okay. 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 Um, so we're going to have costs and this is accumulated costs cumulative costs we'll make it make it very clear and to make something cumulate what what do we need to do what do we need to add to make it cumulate We've had a thing called cumulative cost, a stock. It will start as zero, and what do we need to make it accumulate? A, I heard it earlier, a flow that flows into it. And this is going to be new costs. Let's make it more explicit to emphasize something. New costs, new, and costs. Just want to distinguish them from episodic costs. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we going to compute the annualized costs that need to go into here, into this flow? Is this cost from person zero alone, person one alone? It's across the what? Population. So we have these certain costs that are per year costs from across the population that need to be totaled up across the population and then need to be integrated over time, summed up, accumulated over time. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to sum something up across the population? 
a statistic. I love it. Okay, so let's go back to the population. Boom. Here's the population. Is it not? And we'll go down to statistics, and we're going to say, instead of quality of life summed over population, we're going to say what cost summed over population? Costs. So we'll go create a new one, and we'll say cost summed over population. And mark carefully my actions. This is going to be a thumb, is it not? Is. Um, so we're going to sum up what? What's the expression we're going to sum up? Bearing in mind that that item here refers to each person in the population in turn. What are we going to sum up? Item dot annual. Yeah, we we call that. What was it? What was it called? Annual. So let's go, we can go over here to, to see it on the left. It was called something like um, total annualized costs. Item dot total annualized costs. You'll notice incidentally when you do a sum, there's also a condition you can fill in. So you could total it up only over people who are lower income, for example. Mm. Total up total up the costs over a certain age group of the population. We're not doing that here, but you could you could have a condition there. People okay with that? So that's great. But what do we have to do to complete this picture then? Now that we have that statistic, what do we have to do? Draw on our last example. Dynamic parameter. Dynamic variable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very important distinction. This will be costs summed across population. And this will be given by what? How can we get that value? Population dot what? The statistic, yes. It was, I think, cost summed over population. Right? People comfortable with that? Okay. So now let's establish the link to this flow. And what's the value of the flow going to be by extension? What will be the value of this flow? Awesome. Yeah, cost summed over the name of that variable that we added, the dynamic variable. Cost summed across population, is it not? And make sure the initial value of cumulative costs is zero. Okay, so we can take this and now we run it. And now we see it accumulating costs over time as people's, as they're imposing costs due to their, their states. You notice it's rising in terms of the rates from the beginning. People weren't initially diabetic in large numbers. They weren't initially obese in large numbers. And as larger numbers become obese, the, the, the rate of increase is has risen. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, are you comfortable with what we've done thus far? Comfortable or not? Okay, comfortable. Good. So I'd like to do something else. I'd like to add discounting. I'd like to discount future costs. Are people okay with that? And along with discounted future costs, people will often discount future qualities. Although the reasoning there is 
certainly to me more obscure. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff um, also seems to concur in my judgment. Okay, so let's put in cumulative discounted costs. How would we do that? Well, let's, let's go do this, ladies and gentlemen. I will give you the key ingredient and you will make me the omelet. Okay, so I'm going to pull over a dynamic variable here called discount factor. And more than that, I'm going to pull over a parameter <coughs> called discount rate. Are you okay with that? Okay, discount factor here will be given by, it'll tell us for this moment in time how our costs to be discounted according to time value of money, to go into discounted cash flow ideas. How are we going to discount them into present value terms? Well, we're going to multiply them by e to the minus discount rate times time. This is a formula that reflects continuous discounting. In continuous time, in other words. It reflects the fact that money can grow in a allegedly stable reference investment, risk-free investment in continuous time in some exponential way according to the discount rate. Yes. Sure. So when you go into one of these, let's say, quality sum across population. Okay, uh, hold on for just a second. And you should draw a link here from discount rate to discount factor as it requires it. Okay, so sorry, Dylan. Yeah. So when uh, you have your dynamic variables, and you put a semicolon in there, it will let you do a compilation error. Yeah. Right. Uh, no. I mean, if they put it there? So if I was, yeah, if you were to put a semicolon there, it actually builds. Sorry? Yeah. Um, but then it'll give you an error at runtime. Sorry, I'm just uh, showing a common pitfall here. Yeah. See? That's, that's quite fascinating. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, Dylan was uh, commenting that apparently some folks in the room have befallen a uh, a most um, intriguing um, failure mode of any logic. So um, in these dynamic variables, there's a formula <coughs> by which they depend on the population statistic. This formula, does it require a semicolon or not? Speak as in a Greek chorus. Does it require a semicolon? No, why not? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's not a very good, reliable thing. Um, uh, it, it's very flattering, but but it's not 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 a reliable indicator. I'll tell you that. Um, so so why does it require one? Because it's an expression. It's just something that calculates a value. It's a formula. It's not a statement. It's not a command. It doesn't say do this. And it's really when we tell it do this that we need, give it a command. We say make this happen rather than computing a number or some value. It's in those cases we're commanding it that we need a, se that we need a semicolon. So there's no semicolon needed here. But any logic adds insult to injury. When you ha have a semicolon, it lets you run the model, but then exhibits belated displeasure in a, in a, in a, in a way that's most uncomfortable. So do not have semicolons associated with these, these, um, uh, with these variables at the cost of incurring the displeasure of the software. Indeed, indeed. Okay, folks, next. 
Are people ready to go on? Okay. Discount factor. So 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 would yeah. So we added a discount rate, and we're going to give it a default value if no one specifies it of three percent, as decided by a blue ribbon panel of cost effectiveness and analysts in the states. Well, no, I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, that, that's, that's the approved value um, for, for use in standard cost effectiveness in the states. Um, uh, and, uh, and then there's this link here to the discount factor. Um, and the discount factor is given by a reflection of the fact the idea is that money grows um, exponentially. Um, if we consider it in continuous time, it's growing exponentially according to the discount rate. And this is linked in with the time value of money, just uh, net present value, bringing co future costs into present value by discounting them. Um, when you're considering continuous time, the value is given by um, the exp, EXP of minus the discount rate times time. In other words, it's it's the value of a, of a dollar 100 years in the future is discounted on an annualized basis by the discount rate, but in a continuous way. And its net present value is given by EXP of minus the discount rate times 100. Okay, so I'll put this up on the big screen here. Boom, that's, that's what that is. And maybe I'll make it bigger. Okay, this is the discount factor and this discount factor, we will then multiply by the costs. So this is going to tell us, for given for the current time, how much are the values, the costs uh, imposed at this time, the costs felt at this time, by how much are they discounted as a proportional number. If it's 0.1, basically those costs need to be divided by 10. Okay? So we're going to multiply by this factor. Okay. So, I've given you the ingredient, and I await your omelet. So what do you need to do? Tell me. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful. Joe is cooking. Um, <laughs> that's great, that's great. So we, we create a stock called discounted cumulative costs. It will start with a value of what? <coughs> a value of zero. I'm tempted to use an Australian colloquialism for, for that, but <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm using it in a correct way. I also have an uncomfortable feeling it may not be an entirely polite term. I don't know. <laughs> so, so the stock starts with bugger all. Um, okay, uh, that sounds most uncomfortable to me. Um, I think that'll be the last utterance time I, I utter that. Um, okay, um, and we're gonna have a flow that it's new discounted cumulative costs. Yeah, um, and and. Finally, we're going to have the value of, of this thing being given by what? Joe said it earlier. What is it? The value of discounted cumulative cost, new kind of discounted cumulative cost will be given by what? What times what? Discount factor. So we're going to need to wire that up here. It's going to need to be multiplied by what? Sorry? It needs to be, yeah. It's not, yeah. It needs to be multiplied by something. Okay, the cost summed up across the pot. Oh, sorry. Um, so, okay, yes, this cost summed up across the population, this guy here. Good. Good. 
Okay. Um, so we need to now fill in the formula. Those, those arrows indicate on what it depends, and we need to fill in the formula. Okay. Discount times cost summed across population. Good. Okay. Okay, are people comfortable with that? Okay. Okay. Um, great. Okay. There we go. So now we have discounted costs. Cost discounted to the present from these future numbers. Okay? It'll be remarked that the discounted costs are considerably smaller in magnitude than the cumulative costs. That's great. And if you were so inclined, you could create discounted qualities in the same sort of way. How would you do that? How would you do that? New stock, New stock okay, good. Just about done. Okay. This will be discounted qualities. Okay, good. And then we have the flow into this. And this will be new discounted qualities. These are often used in together with discounted costs. So we would take the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, the difference of discounted qualities between intervention and baseline. Um, and put in the denominator and dollars, discounted dollars in the numerator, the difference in baseline and the incremental, and we divide the two to get incremental cost effectiveness ratio. So new discounted qualities, how, what is the formula for that going to be given by? For, oh gosh, sorry. Terrible English. Um, by what will that flow be given? Okay, good. Discount factor, indeed. Some to cross population. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to drag this here and drag it there. And now we have to type the formula, right? For new discounted qualities, you said it earlier, and that's exactly right. Discount factor times quality of life summed across population. Okay? People comfortable with that? Okay. Good. So, I think the basic idea of discounting them is that, you know, if you are computing incremental cost of evidence ratios, you have discounting in the denominator, then you should have discounting in the numerator, excuse me, vice versa. If you have discounting in the numerator for costs, you should have discounting in the denominator for the quality saved. I think that's the idea. In any case, let's let's run this, and what we'd see is again um, qualities. Okay, so who needs help here? Okay. Just one point: you could instead of having the discount factor, you could just have another stock with an outflow and then it's true. Or even just a negative inflow. Yeah. So instead of that's right. That's right. Okay. So any other questions about that?
it, it was it was it's used together in cost effectiveness analysis where you're commonly discounting costs to reflect the fact that a dollar now can be invested in a stable investment vehicle and, and and be turned into a larger dollar later therefore a single dollar later is worth less than a dollar now we could have gained it putting investing now a smaller amount of money and so costs and incremental cost effectiveness analysis are commonly discount to reflect net present value of, of future costs to reflect the time value of money and um, when we're computing for cost effectiveness analysis incremental cost effectiveness ratios of one intervention against another or against some baseline we compute dollars per quality adjusted life year saved, for example, to reflect the fact that we've extended not only and years to life, life to years. You know, we, 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 we can improve the quality of life, or we can improve the length of life across population. And in that division, there's a there's a dollars in the numerator that's counted. And the idea here is that dollars in the denominator need to be similarly discounted to be. Um, to, to be able to express it meaningfully as some dollars per 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 life, they should be. We're, we're taking taking into account the the life years um, sort of in a similarly discounted way. I'm not entirely comfortable with the concept. I must confess. It, 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 indeed, one can't invest. Uh, in, in, in bank. But I guess the idea is probably something like. Um, <laughs> we're, 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 we're considering the whole okay yeah yeah in any case um it's a, it's a bit of an odd concept to me but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll say it's it's, it's my uh, from my observations, it would be standard practice to discount both, yeah. both of those. So I want to show how it could be done, certainly. Yeah. Yes, in the, uh, the years of uh, kind of zero, uh, the negative interest rate, uh, of change. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Sorry, one more question. Yes. Yes. You ghost it. You could, in, in any logic, if it, let's suppose this discount factor, you want to refer to it more closely, you could go to the palette and, and use the so called shadow variable, which is um, connotes less, less uh, spectral of a nature. Um, and, and you could do then uh, this discount factor, and then you'd have a, a shadow version of it that you could just hitch up locally here without stretching it all the way. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what we've seen there is is, is um, uh, a couple things. Thing one, we've seen that um, that having created the infrastructure for doing computed quality of life at at the individual level and costs at the individual level, computing the the, the cumulative quantities is actually not that difficult. What did it require? It required some statistics in the population to be sure. These summed these quality of life, for example, summed up across the population. Yeah. Um, um, it further required uh, a and, and the cost summed up across the population. It further required some mechanism in, term, in terms of stocks and flows, but it was not something which required a tremendous amount of complexity. The complexity that we faced, which was considerable, was stomached by you prior to your lunch. Hmm? Was it not? Was. Um, so, so here, you know, what was required was comparatively less painful, I think, at this level. Mostly declarative. You sort of can wire these things up. What's also notable is that this is your first constructed example of a hybrid model. 
Here we have stocks and flows, happily computing quantities, as would be typical in a system dynamics model, but using values that are summed up across a population of regions. Are they not? Indeed. Um, so we have a we have a use of the different mechanisms to areas to which they're naturally inclined. Um, and coming with the stocks and flows, this is certainly economy specification and a minimization of the coding. Right? Minimization of, of the coding. Um, so it does lend itself to a fairly easy uh, characterization. But I want to test you with something. Lunch is in your stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. that, that, that lends itself to multiple interpretations. Um, uh, um, okay. Uh, so so let's now let's now go add a graph of these um, uh, of these uh, cumulative costs, for example. Let's go graph out qualities and cumulative costs uh, on two different, um, two different graphs. How would I do that? Two different time plots. Anyone tell me? Okay, go to main, go down main, yeah. Okay, and what do I do once in main? Okay, okay, good. Go over to, uh, actually, it, yes, let's do analysis, thank you, yes. Okay, we're gonna drag a time plot, good. And we'll call this, maybe, um, cost time plot, something like that. Um, cumulative time plot, cumulative, um, uh, cumulative costs, um, sure, cumulative costs, yeah. Um, um, good, and in the data here, we will say this will be the cumulative undiscounted for the title, undiscounted costs. And what are we gonna plot out? What is the so-called value to use here? What is the value that I should use here? The current value is inappropriate. It can be characterized with a colloquialism that I dare not use again. Yeah, it's, it, well, yeah, we'll, we'll do undiscounted. So what do we plot out? Cumulative costs. Okay. Um, okay. Cum sorry. Cumulative costs, right? So we plot. Is it not? Yes. Um, okay, and then let's create another plot, and let's plot out qualities, qualities accumulated to this point. Time plot. Time, time plot accumulated qualities. Okay, and here, this is going to be, we're going to add a data set, qualities, and what will we plot? What, what do I put here? What do I put here? Qualities, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to see the lunch is still being digested. Um, okay, great, great. Here are the qualities, here are the cumulative undiscounted costs. 
accumulating over time. Quite simple, is it not? Hmm? Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Great. So, um, here we've provided several mechanisms for pursuing several health economic mechanisms. Now, there is, there is an extension to this, and it's a natural extension. And I might go into it tomorrow, but I have many things I want to cover. And I'm afraid about using the entirety of the day on, on this topic. So I, I want to, I'd like to move on. If we have time tomorrow, I'll come back to the issue of, um, right now, if you were to use this, you were to simulate intervention, you same some baseline and then some intervention with a changed, a changed assumption about um, the rates at which people become obese, for example, lower rates of obesity. You could run those differences out to time 100. You can compute the difference in discounted or discounted, undiscounted qualities and discounted and undis or out undiscounted costs and you could compute manually an incremental cost-effectiveness ratio between them. There is a way in any logic to get it to do that automatically. We'll run both scenarios and compute the difference. But I'm, I'm afraid about sort of using, using the balance of the afternoon to do that. So as time allows, we may come back to it. There's a video of me showing how to do it. Okay? So I think uh, it's not that painful to do it manually. I mean, it's quite straightforward. Um, how would we run this model out only to a certain time, say to a hundred years? How do we do that? I don't think we've discussed this as a group. How would we do it? Yeah, you get a simulation, you go to model time, and, and then you say, instead of stop never, you say stop at specified time. There are ways to get it to stop, so as we say, programmatically, if a certain condition is reached. Say there's, you know, there's no, um, no one left in the population, or if, um, if, if a certain index is reached at a certain point, you could stop at that too. But uh, this is a very common one. You only want to run it, say, to 100 years. You set the stop time to 100. And, and you run it, and what you'll see is, is it will run out to time 100. And you could compute you know, the uh, discounted cumulative costs for both an, a baseline and this, and then for an intervention and some for qualities, and you could take, uh, take the difference. Okay, people okay with that? Any, any sort of closing questions before a possible revisit to, to the automatic computation of the incremental cost effectiveness ratio tomorrow. Any questions? Okay? Sorry? Oh, oh, thank you. Yes. Okay. So, actually, there is a key thing I forgot to mention, which is even more critical in my mind than that, um, which is episodic costs. You know, epi the, the general issue of episodic costs. So, let's, let's um, before we finish this, Let's return to the issue of episodic costs, and I'm going to nugget.